and hit play. So I would say it works. Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we are making an audio system where we can separate music and sound effects volume independently. And we'll be able to change those volumes while the game is running using some sliders. Do you notice that this video is based a lot on another video I made before called Audio Manager, which goes through the very basis for playing audio clips. All right, so let's start. I'm in a new Unity project. I put in a bit of UI inside and I've set up the Audio Manager. Uh, I'll go real quick on what I've put in just to show you that it isn't really anything big. So all of this that it's here, it's static. There is no code inside. The only two things that I've coded in are the sound effects and the music button. You can see here, I play sound, but the sliders, they don't do anything for now. You can also play the music. These buttons are able to play because on the click event, I've added the audio manager dot play and I've put in the corresponding clip name and the actual audio manager only have one script. It's the audio manager. First thing you notice is an array of sounds. Let's go into that first. Sound is a new script that I made. It's very simple. It holds in uh, all of the values that you want to change in a clip. So the actual audio source, the name of the clip to find it in the array, stuff like that. And then the audio manager with that array of sounds, we make a lot of audio sources and we add them to the audio manager's game object. And then we have two functions, one to play a clip and one to stop a clip. So we can go back to Unity now. And now what you need to do is somehow link the sliders to the volume of the sound effects and the music clips. But first we need to actually separate the clips from music and sound effects. And the way to do that is through Audio Mixer. Audio Mixer is the middleman that goes from the audio sources, so the ones that you find here in Audio Manager when we start the game. Here they are. These are the audio sources. And the Audio Mixer takes those audio sources it changes uh, their values and then passes them in to the camera's audio listener. If you look at the audio managers, you can see that these audio sources right now, they don't have an audio mixer group. So they're going directly to the camera's audio listener. Let's close this. So to start making an audio mixer, we can just make the asset. So right click, create audio mixer. I'm gonna rename it main mixer. And for this tutorial, we're just gonna make one mixer, but you can add as many as you want and switch them out during gameplay. All right, so now we can double click on my mixer and it's gonna open this window. We can take it and dock it wherever we want. This is a nice spot, I think. And now inside the audio mixer, we have the actual mixer that we just made called the main mixer. And then inside this mixer, we have the mixer groups. And by default, we only have one group called master. And you can see that this master has a volume and it also has a pitch. You see this, the effect. And we can add as many effects as we want here. Now to separate sound effects and music clip, we just need to make two new mixer groups. And we can do it here under the tab groups. Notice that right now sound effects is a child of music. I don't want that. I don't want to, I don't want music to be able to control the volume of sound effects. So I'm gonna set it as a sibling, like so. And with this type of hierarchy, if I change the volume of master, the volume of both music and sound effects is also gonna change. So keep an eye on the hierarchy down here. All right, so now we have our two different groups. Now let's find a way to assign those groups to the different clips. So let's go back to our sound script and let's make a new enum for different audio types. And let's also make an instance of it. Now in our audio manager, Let's add a reference to the music mixer group and the sound effects one. And to do this, we need to import the Unity Engine audio library. Make sure it's audio mixer group and not just audio mixer. They are two different things. Now in our awake method, when we create the audio sources, we take a look at the audio type that we just made in the sound script. And based on that, we assign the different mixer group. And if you want more mixer groups, we just need to add an enum and then update this switch statement. And right now we only have two mixer groups, so it's a bit weird to have a switch statement, but just for the sake of clarity, I put it in. Now let's go back to Unity. Let's select our audio manager. And here for the mixer groups, let's put in the values. 
So one and two. Make sure you're not putting in master. And now let's set in the values for sounds. So we have accelerate, which is a song. So I'm gonna set it as music. And PU, which is the shooting effects, I'm gonna keep it as sound. Let's hit play. And now you see that we have the output mixer group that is correct. And if we press edit in play mode, we can change the values of these mixers in real time. Right now it's a normal sound, but if I do like this, we can't hear it anymore. You can see that, whoops, that was a bit too loud, sorry. You can see that it works already, but we're only being able to change the volume through the sliders on the editor. And we don't want to do that. Also, when you change the volumes of these mixers, their values get saved even while you are in play mode. So make sure to reset them to zero when you are done. All right, so to change the values of a mixer group during gameplay, we have to expose the values I want to change. And you see here right now it says expose parameters zero. So just take music and we go to the value I want to change. So in this case, it's volume, right click, expose volume. And here now it says one, you can click on it and you can rename it. Make sure to remember this string because we're gonna use it later. Let's do the same for sound effects. So select the mixer group, right click on volume, expose and whoops, and rename it. All right, and now let's make a new script to handle the switching of the volumes in our mixer. So let's go to our audio manager. Let's make a new component and I'm gonna call it audio options manager. In here, let's make two values for our music and our sound effects. And I've set them static because they're gonna be very unique in our game. And I've also made them private on the set. So we won't gonna be able to change them you know, the script, but only be able to read from them. All right, so we want these values to reflect our audio mixer's values. And to change these values, we are gonna use the sliders. So let's make a new function. Make sure to make it public because we're gonna link it through the inspector with our slider and also to give it a float parameter. That's gonna be the value of the slider. Now we can just set the music's volumes to the value. And to show what's going on, let's also add a text to reference what is the current value. If I do the same for the sound effects slider and so make its own function, let's go back to Unity real quick. Let's drag in the references. Uh, if you notice there, our music mixer, well, all the mixers in general, they don't go from zero to 100. They go from minus 80 to 20, which is really weird for us. Uh, for a normal human being, you don't really calculate volume this way. But if you're talking about decibels, that's how decibels work. They work through logarithmic scale. That means that the difference between zero and 10 is a lot different from the difference between minus 80 and minus 70. And they are a completely different length. Also, minus 80 means that the volume will be muted. At zero, the volume is completely normal. So uh, it's basically the raw file. If you go past zero, if you try to go up, you're actually gonna worsen the audio quality. So it's a good practice to never go past zero, to never increase artificially the audio volume. Why do we want to know that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because now in your sliders here, music and effects slider, we want to set in the values of our maximum and minimum value accordingly to what I just said. So instead of having from one to 100, like you would have normally, instead we set the minimum value to 0 0.0001, and the maximum value to one. And we also remove whole numbers. Why do we say 0001 instead of zero? Because for how decibels work and how they're calculated in our computers, if you put the minimum value to zero, the audio will actually revert back to its maximum value and will be really loud. A bit weird, I know, but that's just how it works. Also, let's select our music slider and let's add the event. So audio manager, audio options manager and make sure to select the dynamic function hit play and you see that it's gonna look a bit weird yeah you see that it gives the decimal values and it's really unpleasant to look at but we can fix this no problem let's close play back to visual studio 
Now to make this better, it's really simple. We just multiply the value by 100. So you go from one to 100. And to remove the decimals, we just cast it into an int. All right, let's go back to Unity. And now we have our slider. And we don't even have to care about the minimum value not being actually zero, because when we cast it into an int, it just gets converted to zero. So that works. All right, so now we just have to pass in this value to our audio mixer and convert it into decibels. To do that, let's go to Visual Studio. Let's go into our audio manager. Let's make a new function to update the audio mixer volume. And let's call it when we change the music's volume. And before we go any further, let's copy and paste this function for the sound slider. And here to get the audio mixer, we have to change those parameters. We could add a reference to the main mixer, but we already have a reference to the mixer groups. And through the mixer groups, we can get the main mixer. We can just say music mixer groups and say dot audio mixer, and that's gonna get its uh, main mixer's parent basically. We can just select this. And now we have access to set float. We do set float, and now in here we have to pass in the same string values that we set in our exposed parameters. So, for example, music volume. But we can't pass it in as is, we have to convert it into decibels. To do this, it's really simple. We use the log 10 of our music and then multiply it by 20. All right, now we can just do the same for the sound effects. And just for clarity, I'm gonna start in from the sound mixer group, even though it doesn't change anything because we are accessing this. All right, back to Unity, and let's pass in the event for the effects slider. Here we go, and hit play. Start the music. Seems to work. If you look at the mixer, you see that when we are at the zero, it changes very drastically. But when we get uh, closer to the end, so closer to 100, the increase gets um, slower. That's because of the logarithmic scale. And the same goes for the effects. So I would say it works. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope you learned something new. If you have any doubts, make sure to tell me in the comments or join my Discord channel. And by the way, if you still don't get what I just did in this tutorial, there is a link in the description to a GitHub repository where you can just download the entire project. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, ring the notification bell, share the video, follow me on uh, YouTube. No, no, I just, I already said that. Uh, follow me on uh, Twitter to get updates on the new game that I'm making. It's really cool and I can't wait to release it. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. All right, and I'll see you next video.